Welcome to the lab section on Azure Cross Season Load Balancer. And here we are going to perform hands on labs to unlock the secret recipe how to build a load balancer to achieve the low latency, high resiliency, and high availability. The lab topology is going to be very, very simple. And here we are going to test the port 80 application while running the Apache on the Linux machine, which is going to be part of the pool. So what we are going to do here, first of all, you need to create these two load balancer. Those can be in different reasons. And top of that, you are going to add the cross season load balancer. So I'm going to use my existing VMs, pools, and the load balancer. So let's take a look from the portal. What are the resources available before we create cross season load balancer? Let's switch to the portal and from portal, let's go to the load balancer section. Under the load balancer section, you can see I have already created two load balancer. Those are going to be public in nature. So my first load balancer, this is one we created when I was doing the lab for previous section. So this load balancer, you have one front end IP assign, which is a start from 52. And if I go to another load balancer, which I created in West US, and we are going to see a different IP address for the front end. We need to keep in mind when you are creating the cross season load balancer that only works for public IP address. So you cannot basically integrate your internal load balancers. Now let's verify the connectivity from the IP address which is assigned to your public load balancer. So in this case, if I browse 53249-21285 and that means it's hitting port number 80 and my load balancer is configured for port 80. So when the all traffic goes to that, it is getting redirected to the first VM and that is expected. And the second load balancer, what I have created that is part of the West US. So if I hit the IP 4083.170.24, it takes me to the West US pool member. And before we create the cross region load balancer, you need to keep in mind, we need to choose the home region. So that is going to be these specific. So when I'm going to create it, I'm going to choose one of them. So I will go for, let's go for the central US. And in this case here, I'm not having any sort of the workload. My workload, is in East US and West US. So let's get started while logging back to the portal and create the global cross region load balancer. I switched back to the portal. You need to go to the load balancer. And from load balancer, we can see these are the load balancer deployment for our workload. And let's hit create. resource group i will keep this as it is and i want to give it a name so it's going to be the global so glb and we wanted to choose central us because this is the reason which belongs to those home reasons sq type is going to be the standard your load balancer type so you need to keep watch here the moment i click on public this global tab will get enabled now you can see it this is enabled and that is how we are going to create the cross region load balancer now we want to create a global load balancer and hit next you need to assign the front end ip address is going to be IPv4 in this case. I need to create the new one. Now look at here, this is going to be the standard and the tier is going to be the global. Assignment type is a static and let's hit OK. Click Add. This is added and it's time to create the backend pool. 
and from the backend pool I will just name it as a pool and I need to choose where is my load balancers basically so this is the one which is in East US and the second one is going to be the West US and now you need to put the PIP and this is you can see as a pool but this is not the pool as well as was a typo when I was doing the configuration but it doesn't matter it is giving you the two IP address what we tested earlier while browsing to the home page and now we need to hit save review and create validation pass hit the create button I'm going to pause the video and once this deployment is over I will come back and now my resources are ready so we can go to the resource now we are going to see the front-end IP address and this is going to be the IP address which get advertised from participating reasons so it is going to be the anycast IP and we can see this IP start from 4.150.161.57 backend pool we have two load balances one is in East US this one is in West US and it's time to add a load balancing rule so let's add that it's rule one this is going to be the front end IP address where all the requests will hit and then you need to define the pool protocol TCP and port number is going to be 80 80 and rest of the fields I'm going to leave to the default and let's just save it This is saved and at this moment I should be able to browse the web page or the workload or the website from this front end IP address. So let's try to do that. And when I browse this IP address for 150.168.57, that's the Anycast IP address, and it works. It takes me to the VM one LB that means I'm going to East US and no matter how many times I'm going to refresh based on the my IP address and the workload these algorithm will take me to this workload only and the moment I'm going to change my location and whosoever is going to be the nearest point it, it, it is going to hit that particular load balancer So it works. I kept refreshing and it still goes to East US. Since this is still going to the VM1, let's do a, another test and I'm going to shut down the Apache 2 services running on this and then see how fast it's going to be the failover. So I'm going to stop Apache here. And at this moment, the redirection should happen to another workload. And now we see my request is getting diverted to the West US. And this is pretty fast failover, you can see. From networking point of view, you can run the trace route to the Anycast IP address. In our case, it is going to be for 150.168.57. And we see this is leaving my wireless network and this is my service provider and this is getting entered to MSN.net that is going to be the Microsoft network if you recall it I have mentioned this is going to find 
PGP based Anycast nearest route entry point to the Microsoft network. So this is that is how you see that the pairing is happening between the Airtel and MSN. And this is going to be the nearest pop. And based on this, A61, I can guess this is going to be the Juniper device as well. If you do a ping, this is my the resource, the VM, which we were trying to access. I'm able to ping it since I allowed those rules, ICMP rules, basically to the NSG security rules. And when you ping the IP address, which is any CAS IP address, it's not reachable. And the reason it is not reachable, load balancer doesn't allow ICMP traffic. However, you can ping your resources while using PSPing tool. So you can download this from this azurespeed.com and you can put PSPing and this is going to be your destination and which port you want to do the probe. So in our case, since all the workload is on port 80, so this is going to be the valid one. And then you see the response. That is it for this lab. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next section.